Hey there, Mercedes here from prettywebs.com and today I'm going to show you how to make a turquoise pattern and layer style inside of Photoshop. Everything we're going to do here is from scratch. So everything that you're seeing here was made inside of Photoshop. This right here is just a sample image that I'm using to create all of this. So it's not going to be exactly the same, but uh, pretty close to it. And what we're going for here is a rough turquoise look. So this isn't going to be that smooth, shiny turquoise. We are going to have some shine to it, but it's not going to be a completely finished turquoise. It's going to have some texture to it. And right here I have a few examples. So all of these were created with the same texture, the pattern, the texture that we're going to be creating today. But when we create the layer style, I'm going to show you how to change the colors. All of these have the same base colors, the exact same pattern. Turquoise does have a lot of variation in color, so I'm going to show you how to change that. So stick with me through the layer style so I can show you how to create all of the variation in color as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with a new document. This one is going to be 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels, 72 resolution. We're working in 8-bit because we are going to be using filters and uh, that's pretty much it. We're going to click create. Now again, if you need this for print, you would up your resolution and uh, at some point after you have your filters and everything, you can switch over to CMYK if you need to print. But for the web, which is my focus, 72 and RGB is fine. So I'm going to uncheck that little lock icon right there. And let me briefly review the colors. I'm going to show you the background color, which is 325D5A. That's going to be our background color. And our foreground color is 3BBCCB. We'll click OK. These are going to be our general colors. Um, if you want specific colors, you can change these to get specific colors in your texture. Or you can just go in and, and change the colors later on, which is what we're going to do. So once you have those there, I'm going to go ahead and right click here and convert this to a smart object so that we can work with our filters. Again, I'm working with a very random type pattern. So if anything needs to be changed, you're better off having the smart object so that you can take care of that. So uh, once you have that, we can come up to filter. We're going to go to render clouds. Now we can come back up to filter render difference clouds one more time we're going to just use that last setting right here difference clouds just to bring back that color once you have that we can come back up to filter this time we're going into filter gallery and we're going to get rid of all of those we'll start with the sponge okay so we are going to be using this sponge texture and you can find the sponge texture inside of art the artistic folder let me back out of all of these so right here it's going to be the first folder and it's this one right here called sponge the settings for that are going to be brush size four our definition is two and our smoothness is five now we can come down here uh, to the little plus icon to add a new filter. This time we're going to be using the chalk and charcoal filter and that is inside of this one right here is called sketch and it's the second one right here. So for chalk and charcoal, our charcoal area is six, chalk area is six, and our stroke pressure is going to be two. Now this is going to depend a lot on the look that you're going for. So here you can see I have a lot of this like brownish color in here and I do want that. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it. But if you raise that charcoal area, you can see how that starts to disappear. I'm going to go ahead and leave that. And then for the chalk area, uh, I'm going to bring that all the way up to 20 because I do want a lot of this dark area showing. So I'm going to go ahead and leave those settings as they are. Next we're going to add the plastic wrap setting and that uh, plastic wrap is also up here. We're going to press this little plus icon and we're coming up here to this artistic folder that's going to be the first one and we'll come and choose plastic wrap. 
Now, we don't want it to look so shiny. We do want somewhat of a rough texture. Typically, when you see turquoise, like in jewelry and things like that, you it does have a shine to it, um, but it's not going to it's not going to look wrapped like this. I do want to use a plastic wrap to get the dimension, but I don't want the shine until uh, later on when we apply our layer style. So our highlight strength, uh, we're going to leave at two. And that's just to get a little bit of height on there. And then for our detail, we're going to bring that to 10 and our smoothness, we're going to take down to three. So you can see we're starting to get some height right here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and add another plastic wrap texture. We're going to change the settings for this one a little bit. So for our highlight strength on this one, we can leave this one at, we'll go ahead and we'll leave it at three for now. We're going to bring our detail down because we're getting a lot of um, banding here. So we're going to bring that down to about eight. And then we'll bring our smoothness up just to get rid of that banding. So we'll leave the smoothness at about 10. And you can see that we've got that depth and a little bit of shine, but it's not uh, overwhelming like we had before. Maybe bring up the shine here just a little bit. So uh, I just went back to that first one and I upped that the highlight strength just by one. So I brought it up to three instead of two where we had it before. You're going to have to work with this depending on the random pattern that Photoshop gives you. They're all going to look different, but uh, something similar to this is what we're going for. I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and that's going to leave us with a pattern that looks like this. From right here, we're going to come up to edit, define pattern, and we'll just uh, name this turquoise. All right, once we have that, we're going to go ahead and add a new layer. And I'm just going to fill that with white, command and delete, or uh, control and backspace to fill that with our uh, background color. And we're not going to need this anymore. We've already created our pattern. So I'm just going to turn that off. Uh, what I want to do is create our first little gemstone. And I'm going to use the ellipse tool. I'm going to make it kind of long, like a long oval shape. I'm going to come over to the pen tool and I'm going to press option on my keyboard just to remove, actually I'll remove the top one. So just to remove that top, just to get this teardrop shape. You could do it on both sides, uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as it is. So this is going to be the shape that we're working with. Double click right here on the far right hand side to bring up my layer styles. And I'm going to start with a bevel and emboss. So go ahead and check off bevel and emboss. And our settings for the bevel and emboss are going to be inner bevel. We want a smooth technique. Uh, depth is going to be 105. Direction is up. Our size is 46. We're going to soften zero. Our angles are 120 and altitude 70. And then our gloss contour, uh, we're going to use half round. And for highlight mode, we're going to be using a hard mix. The color for that one is going to be 40C7D9. Click OK. And our shadow mode, I'm sorry, our opacity here is going to be 40%. Our shadow mode multiply is fine. Uh, our color for this one is going to be 05332F. And our opacity here is going to be 60%. Uh, I know you can't see anything that's happening right there. That's just because I'm going layer by layer. So eventually you'll see what we're uh, working on. Next, I'm going to add a contour. And for the contour, I'm going to go ahead and change that to half round. And my range is going to be 80%. And you can kind of see what's going on here on the preview, but you're not going to see it just yet here on the image. In fact, what I'm going to do is come over to the pattern and I'm going to add uh, that pattern in. This is the pattern that we just created. So we can kind of get um, 
you know, a spot that we like. I'm going to bring this up in size and just look for a rough spot. Maybe about right there is good. Again, for the pattern, blend mode is normal, opacity 100%, and we're scaling to 50% for this one. You can change this depending on the size of the object that you're styling. But for us, that's going to be our settings. All right, let's go ahead and keep going. We're going to add a stroke next. So I don't have my stroke showing up here, so I'm going to come down to the little uh, FX icon down here and just uh, click on stroke. For the stroke, our size is going to be three pixels. Our position is inside. Blend mode is normal. Opacity is 100%. And our fill type is going to be gradient. So for the gradient, the one that I'm using is uh, pretty complex. So what I'm going to do is just leave a link down in the description so that you can download that later on. So these are the two that I'm going to have in that, uh, that pack. One of them is silver and then the other is a gold. So we're going to use this one and you can see all of the different colors. So this would take forever just for me to name off all of that. So I'm just going to uh, leave it as a download for you. I'm going to click OK. And actually this gem is a little bit too big for um, just three pixels. So I'm going to go ahead and maybe make it four pixels. And work with the scale just a little bit. I just want a little bit of shine on the outside and just to give it a little bit of finish. Uh, but it, you can see if you make it too thick, uh, you start to see how unrealistic it is. So you have to be really careful with how thick you make that. About five pixels for this particular size is going to be okay. Okay, so we've got our uh, stroke. Again, position inside. Uh, we're using this custom gradient here. Our style is linear. Our angle is 90 degrees. And for this one, I have it scaled to 66%, but again, you can work with that depending on the size of your image. So we're going to move on to inner shadow. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Okay, for the inner shadow, we're going to be using a blend mode of multiply. Our color here is going to be B1B0AA. Our opacity is 69%, angle is negative 97. I'm going to uncheck global light for this. Our distance is 44 pixels. Our choke is going to be 32. Whoops. And our size is going to be 27. So you can see how we're getting, you know, that dimension in here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and leave our contour exactly as it is. I'm going to add another inner shadow. So I'm just going to press this little plus sign right there to add another one. Okay, for this second inner shadow, uh, we're going to be using the same settings here, blend mode multiply with that same color B1B0AA. Our opacity for this is going to be 54%. And our angle is going to be 87 degrees. Distance is going to be 22 pixels. Choke 18. And our size is going to be 38. Again, we'll leave the contour as it is. And we've already got our pattern overlay. So we're just going to skip that and come down to drop shadow. I'm going to go ahead and check off drop shadow and open that up. Okay, for the drop shadow, our blend mode is multiply. Our color for this is going to be 393939. Opacity is going to be 42%. And our angle is going to be 90 degrees. Distance is going to be 2. And again, this might change with the size of your document. Our size for this is going to be 8. And our contour is going to be half round. So the drop shadow is just a, a subtle change because it's um, intended to be laying flat on a surface. So um, you're not going to get much of a shadow, but we do want to add that dimension there. So I'm going to click OK, and that's pretty much it for this style.
is I want to show you how to create different colors just based off of what we have going on right here. So I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of all of this. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn this off, this top one, and I'm going to double click right here to open up those layer styles. So I wanted to just show you how to change the color if you wanted to without having to remake the entire uh, texture. So right here in Bevel and Emboss, uh, we have our shadow colors. With these, you can make this color. So right here, we have a really bright blue, but sometimes you'll see turquoise uh, that'll be like more of a greenish color. So you can come down here and just kind of play with this color to find something that's a little more green. And then uh, the same thing with that shadow color. Um, and you'll get something more like this. So I'm gonna move this over and open that back up so you can see the difference in variation and color that you get from these and then I can I'll come into the stroke and add that gold uh, which you'll also get a copy of that as well so if you want uh, to use the style that I have here as a starting point I'll go ahead and leave you a link to that as well so make sure to check down in the description for links to the custom gradients and for the layer style that we used in this video uh, if you like these textures from scratch videos, um, you can check out the one that we did last week uh, where we made Jade from scratch and I have a whole playlist on others that you can check out that's going to be up on the screen right now. If you like this video, make sure to like and share it. And if you want to make sure to catch all of the tutorials that we have coming out on this channel, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification, and visit prettywebs.com for more design resources and tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching.